Alright guys, this is a long plane review for Frag Bruno's Boxing on the Amstrad CPC, released by Elite Systems in 1985. Now this is of course endorsed by Frank Bruno, a British boxer famous in the 80s and 90s and was a very beloved and hugely popular character too. When this game was released in 85 he hadn't actually reached the pinnacle of his career and popularity. Indeed, he didn't become the WBC World Heavyweight Champion until 1995, defeating Oliver McCall and retiring shortly after that. So Elite did a very good deal here that must have worked out extremely well for them over the years. They probably didn't pay much for his name at the time, but if they did, it's a gamble that's paid off. Indeed, this appeared on a large number of compilations and Elite made the most of it, milking their cash cow, especially when his fame reached a peak with a title bout against Mike Tyson, which he ultimately lost. However, Elite still cashed in on this with another re-release in Frank Bruno's World Championship Boxing commemorative issue, Bruno vs Tyson, that was a mouthful, in 1989. Elite were also a little bit naughty here in pretty much ripping off Nintendo's Punch-Out, released to the arcades in 1983. We'll take a look at the footage here so we can sort of compare with um, Frank Bruno's boxing. But Punch-Out uh, may have become more famous later on with its Mike Tyson's Punch-Out on the Nintendo Entertainment System in 1987. And that's two years after Frank Bruno's boxing. And Nintendo ironically licensing a boxer there too. And indeed the boxer that would later have Bruno's most famous fight. And yes, that commemorative re-release. So it's a funny old world, know what I mean, Harry. Mm. <laughs> So anyway, pay close attention here because we're going to see just how much of a clone Frank Bruno's boxing is. We have various fighters with silly names and personalities and our first encounter with some light casual racism with a fighter called Pizza Pasta from Italy. Oof, right. Um, you control your fighter with a joystick to either dodge left and right or use up and down to raise or lower your guard. There are three fire buttons, one for punching left, one for punching right, and if you feel the KO meter by repeated, right, repeatedly landing blows, a button for the knockout blow is available to use, which you can only do when the KO symbol is flashing to get that knockout. Otherwise, you have to win with three knockdowns after draining their energy each time. Energy works by a system where, say, if you land a successful blow on an opponent, you, you regain some lost energy whilst he loses some, and vice versa. And also, energy is lost for not landing a successful blow, so don't spam your punches. However, that isn't actually carried over to Frank Bruno's boxing. Talking of fighters and their personality, each of them are unique and have their own fighting style, special moves and tells before they initiate certain attacks. On the first fighter here you see his eyes turn yellow before he tries one of his more deadly attacks. So the key here is to learn their tell and, at and attack patterns and see what attacks they're vulnerable to. This carries over to Frank Bruno's boxing. Indeed, Frank Bruno's boxing steals most of this, and you can call it an unofficial clone if you want to, and I'm surprised Nintendo didn't sue, but this was early days in 1985, before the big mighty N became very fussy and litigious. So, in Frank Bruno, you will find silly fighters with different personalities, fighting styles or weaknesses, just like Punch-Out. The casual racism of their names and personalities, I'm going to give you a warning guys if you're sensitive to this, are cranked up to levels that will likely offend a lot of people today. Um, you will have the same energy system and the need to get free knockdowns. And, uh, You've got the KO meter as well and the knockout punch separately. And yes, so that the KO meter will be working identically here. Right, however though, it struggles with emulating the controls. So really, that this is the first problem with the game, the controls. Just uh, look at those keys there, right? And imagine uh, on your right hand, you'll be using K and L, I and O. It's just gone into a demo mode automatically here. We'll come out of that in a sec. And on your left hand, number one, Q and A, and then your thumb on the space bar. That's how I'm going to be playing this bloody game. 
So if you're in front of a keyboard, put your hands on the keyboard now and imagine, especially if your right hand using K and L, I and O, and the awkward positioning of your fingers to do that. Oh yeah, high scores there, which I think do get saved and carried over with your codes that you accumulate throughout the game. Um, note there as well that you can have two simultaneous joysticks, but I've no idea how this maps onto one joystick, let alone two joysticks. It doesn't actually talk about it in the manual at all. So keyboard it is, and off we go on the first fighter, Canadian Crusher from Canada. And he's pretty darn easy, to be honest. Look at that spamming the high punches there to the head. We've got the KO button flashing so we can hit the space bar to do our knockout punch. And down he goes. So basically just mix up the low and high punches and when your right punch starts connecting, keep spamming it to the head. If he's blocking you, go for the body blow to lower his guard, then attack his head. Oh, he just actually knocked us down of his special move. Uh, so when he's, he stands with his gloves apart, looking like he's holding his hands up, taunting you, that's his tell that he's about to launch his special move. And you just have to be quick enough to dodge it with the uh, duck. And remember, duck is Q on the keyboard. One to raise your guard, which will also allow you to do punches to the head. Um, a lowers your guard, so when you throw your punch using I or O, that'll be a body punch. Okay, and then you've got Q, sorry, K and L to dodge left and right. That, that was his tell there, and I completely missed it. I actually did really, really bad on the first fighter here, actually, guys, and I could have probably knocked him down a lot quicker. But I literally kind of, the first five fighters, uh, I beat them all on my first kind of go. I didn't, this was kind of like, this was actually my first practice run. I thought I'd record it anyway. And I actually got quite far in the game. So with hindsight and knowing like um, a few of their uh, tells or whatever, I probably could have done a lot better. But I had a little read of a guide and watched a uh, ZX Spectrum sort of long play. Oh, there you go. You get um, the, the codes there. Feel free to note it down. But it is tied to your initials, so uh, your free letter name. So um, you need to make sure you use the same free initials as well as the right membership code. That's quite clever. That carries over. Uh, but OK, so now we're going to move on to the second boxer, which which is... Fling Long Chop. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> All the way from the land of the rising hi fi comes Fling Long Chop, a martial arts master of no can do. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, dear. That's going to upset someone somewhere. Um, right. Okay, this guy. Um, he seems a bit all over the place with his attacks, and I find it hard to fill the KO meter. So just spam headshots, um, alternating randomly between left and right headshots with your head punches or whatever. Um, when he ducks, that's it. That's his tell that he's about to do his special move, the flying kick, which we'll probably see happening very shortly. There he is, and I, <laughs> I did see it coming there, but I was hammering the fire button, well the punch button, too quickly, and there is a bit of a lag with the controls. So even though I hit the space bar to duck, sorry, the uh, A, sorry, Q button to duck, it was uh, too late in terms of the computer processing in my control due to a bit of lag. So I took a kick to the face there. So don't hammer the keyboard too much. Like, da -da 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 -da. keep it a steady pace of your punches. Da, 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 da. Otherwise, like the kind of like the control buffer kind of feels in a way. And when you want to do, quickly change and do something else like a dodge or a duck, you're in trouble then. So a nice, nice steady pace with um, your punches. And he's caught me out again. But I learned pretty quickly. So, um, to be honest, guys, not my best run. But um, it's really the first five or so fighters are not too hard. And you can basically, because it loads in one fighter at a time, which is kind of annoying and especially would be really bad for cassette and tape users, not so much on disc, You can, but you can basically replay the same fighter over and over again. So when you finally knock him out and you get the code for the next boxer, you move on and carry on like that way. 
Also guys, there is only three minutes per match and there's no round. So you've got basically one round of three minutes to win. And that's getting three knockdowns. Uh, it doesn't matter if you've had two knockdowns and he's had no knockdowns, you will still lose if that timer hits three minutes. And we're gonna have trouble with the timer later on um, in this long play, which we'll see in a bit. Anyway, so, um, okay, we're gonna talk about the programmers and coders uh, in a minute, um, but we're gonna move on to the third fighter here. And we've got eight fighters in total. And um, yeah, this guy we're gonna see in a minute. Um, again, I think this one's fairly easy. This one is Andra Puncheredov from Russia. Andra is a fast dancing Russian who gets to your head faster than a neat glass of vodka. Oh God, <laughs> racial and cultural stereotypes. Ahoy, there we go. And um, this guy um, is really susceptible to high punches, seemingly to right head punches. Um, but vary that with the odd left one to the f to the head. Uh, however, you can unleash a deadly body blow combo, as we saw there. And he doesn't really have any tell before. That is essentially kind of his, his, his special move, that body blow combo. But as you can see, guys, he's not too hard. Just he's, he's really susceptible to those head punches to the right. Your right punch. Um, so let's talk about coders behind the game quickly. Um, coding and graphics are credited to four different people. Um, Andy Williams is one of them. Uh, I think he's the main coder. He also did Bomb Jack 1 and 2 along with Boogie Boy and Live and Let Die for Elite. So very, that's a very good CV actually. And lastly, uh, a game called Impact for Audiogenic. Um, another credit for Trevor Perks, he may have assisted on coding. His only other Amstrad game was I Alien for CRL. There we go. Um, another credit here for Gary Priest, another coder. Um, his other games uh, were for Gremlin Graphics, such as Basil the Great Mouse Detective, Footballer of the Year 2, Gary Lineker's Hotshot, and Technocop. Lastly doing um, Terminator 2 for Ocean. There you go. Um, one final credit here for Rory Green, which I think is our graphics artist here. Um, he isn't credited with any of her games on the Amstrad, except for the excellent graphics work on Houston's Marauder, which I long played and re reviewed fairly recently on the channel. And there we go. There's Andra down to the count, and we can move on to the fourth fighter. I've been looking at the other versions um, for other systems of this game. Um, and by the way, guys, the ZX Spectrum version is pretty much identical to the Amstrad one, just slightly different colours and uses the beeper sound. I don't know whether we can call this a specy port or not. They were probably developed alongside each other at the same time and use the same code base and graphics, pretty much. Box of four. Tribal trouble. Oh god. Tribal trouble means trouble for anyone that has a temper that gets the better of you. Landing the punches with unnerving accuracy. This guy is from Africa. Oh my god, he's got a bloody bone through his nose. Jesus. <laughs> oh moving swiftly on. Okay, this guy's pretty easy. Really, and doesn't appear to have a special attack move at all. Uh but he does like to block a lot of high punches. Uh, but he is really weak to body blows. So get a blo uh, get a body blow in. He will then lower his guard, then go for the head, and just keep repeating and win. Now, as I'm playing this, I'm kind of just figuring it out because this is for, this is like the, pretty much the first time I'm fighting him. So um, yeah, I get better as I go along. Anyway, guys. <laughs> Uh, the Commodore 64 version of this game, um, it's much better presented actually. It even has the Rocky theme music on the title screen. It moves faster at a better frame rate and there's no sort of flickery sprites. Um, it's way more colourful and overall seems to be the better version of the Amstrad and Specky, etc. Um, it also appeared on the Commodore 16, which is basically a massively cut down, no frills version of the Commodore 64 one, but with only three fighters, not the full eight. This also appeared on the Commodore Plus or Commodore Plus 4, whatever you want to call it. I don't know much about this computer and there's no footage of this game running on this system on YouTube, but I believe it's the same as the C16 version. I might be wrong there. 
Um, shall we talk about the oh, any other versions? Yeah, let's do it. Right. There's also this appeared on the PC DOS as well. Um, it's only in two colours, black, <laughs> black and white, including like the uh, heads-up display and scoreboards and stuff. Um, but it's basically the same as the Specky and CPC one on DOS. Hmm. It even uses the same font, but it's at a worse frame rate. And from the footage I've seen, there's no sound unless it's broken in the emulator. And lastly, guys, Frank Bruno's Boxing appeared on the Amstrad PCW. Wow. And it's a quick and dirty port from the Amstrad CPC version. Uh, but it's slower with some horrible sprite tearing when uh, uh, the uh, enemy boxers are moving left or right, especially. I don't believe there's any sound here apart from a high-pitched beep when a punch is landed. And uh, if you're not on a green screen, you will see old-school CGA graphics in bright blue, in bright blue, pink, white, and black. Wow. <laughs> okay. Um, this guy's giving me a. This guy isn't too hard, actually. Yeah. So, yeah, doing a body blow, then going for a punch. Oh, he's fighting back, though. So, a yeah, body blow with the left left body blow, then right head punch. Just kind of mix that up. That seems to work really well. Looks like he gets in a punch straight after the head punch if you're successful. So, perhaps I need to adjust my tactics and do a dodge. So, maybe what you need to do here, guys, is left body punch, right head punch, and then quickly dodge. No, I didn't figure that out at the time, but I'm seeing it now, you know, watching this footage and commentating. Yeah, sound effects aren't great in there. The kind of standard, like, crowd, crowd cheering noise that you heard in every football game and sports game. It's just a load of white noise, but <laughs> it's all right. You get the beep and then there's a crunch for when your punch lands and the ding ding of the bell. And that's it. Sound effects a bit weak. Could have had some music on the title screen. Come on, guys. Right, Frenchie. Frenchie may look cool and suave, but his deceptive facade hides a menacing man ready to make you see stars. Okay, so this guy's from France, and they've just lazily called him Frenchie. Okay, uh, this guy has a very obvious tell before his uh, attack move. He literally stands there windmilling his arm around, winding up for the attack. So getting the timing right can be tough on it um, because he takes a little bit longer than the others with um, getting his attack move going. Uh, but his weakness is head punches from the left, believe it or not. But vary it with the odd right-hander. Um, but he seems to block all body blows. And he can get quite a few... There he goes. There's his special attack move. So you can't counter it. So just get ready to duck. See, it takes a little bit longer of him windmill his arm, windmilling his arm around there. But as we progress with this fighter here, I start to realise that like left head punches uh, is the way to go. Wow, yeah, okay, he's got a nasty combo body blow there. So I probably should be um, ducking a lot more or weaving left and right uh, using K and L on the keyboard. But these earlier fighters are fairly uh, forgiving um, with you just sort of spamming away your punches. So this isn't this isn't an expert playthrough, but I I will give you the rough guide of how to beat each of these fighters. As best I can. It's kind of hard to work out really. Sometimes some of these later fighters are really frustrating and their attack patterns seem to be quite random. And I think on a couple of fighters coming up, um yeah, the next two fighters. I think I was quite lucky in fudging my way through to be honest. This game can be very frustrating from this point onwards. And um I, there was definitely a lot of swear words coming from my uh, office <laughs> fighting the next two fighters and trying to get the victory. Oof. And that's where the game stops becoming uh, fun for me. This is actually quite a fun boxing game. 
And um, it's a, been a long time since I've played Barry McGuigan's boxing, which I've, I, I remember sort of kind of regarded as like the best boxing game. I may be wrong on that. I'll have to check that out on another video. But um, but yeah, I, I think this is I think this holds up pretty well, and it's nice to have a version of Punch Out on the Amstrad, even if it, even if it's kind of a naughty, unofficial clone, because Punch Out in the arcade is actually hell of a hell of a good time, good fun. Oh, so I didn't get the timing right there and the duck. So you have to duck that special move there. But actually, time is running out, uh, guys. Two minutes 30. Remember, we've got a three minute time limit on this. But it is actually quite fun working out their attack patterns, which attacks work best. Uh, what, they're what they are susceptible to, what their weaknesses is, and what they're trying to figure out what their tell is before they do their special attack. This is a game where you play the fighter over and over and over and learn, learn it. So you do need to be patient and be very observant and try things out and see what works. Um, but trying to work it out for this guy coming up, I think this guy coming up here is probably the hardest fighter alongside fighter number seven. This guy's a nightmare. And this is where it gets really tough, guys. And so far, as I mentioned, I haven't really had to duck and dive too much, but you will hear. With Ravioli Mafiosi. <laughs> Ravioli is not a man to mess with. He knows all the dirty tricks and he uses them without a care in the world. So this guy's from Italy and he's called Ravioli Mafiosi. Right, okay, so how to beat this guy? Um... Um, keep ducking to the left whenever his gloves are up, his guard is up, and especially his right glove, i.e. the one to the left of you that you're facing. So, yeah, the one we're looking at now will be on the left, but it's, it's the right hand. So, just to reiterate, when his gloves are up, and especially his right glove, uh, the one to the left that we're facing, uh, keep ducking and diving. Well, actually, dive use uh, so do dodge left and right with K and L. Um, he always attacks with his left, i.e., on your right. As soon as he lowers his gloves, attack high, and when you land a hit, or don't after a few try, or or you don't after a few tries, start the dodging process again and repeat. Um, his tell before his attack move is his shrug, but if you time it right, you can counter with a high punch. Otherwise, he'll knock you down with a strong punch in one go. So, start, there you go, start di dodging to the left there. There's his tail. You can, if you get it just right, you can actually counter it. He was about to launch his special attack. And we got him. I have to say, guys, even though this moves like quite a, a, not a great kind of frame rate, uh, it's a little bit flickery. You can see sort of like sort of white flashing lines coming down your sprite. Um, I have to say though, I like the sprite design, even if it is quite blocky and messy. It's got some, it's got some real character to it, and I do like the animations and stuff like that. <laughs> even though it looks a bit hokey and stuff now, um, I'm still on the other side, still quite impressed by it. Um, it's just a shame that a game called Pit Fighter years later, at least the conversion, basically mimics these sort of black and white, big chunky pixel graphics to much worse effects. Um, but they've achieved some quite quite a few um, different animations and stuff like that, and it actually works together quite well. And otherwise, it's actually quite well presented. I like the character uh, characters. Uh, the pictures of the boxers in the top corners there and um, put in the casual kind of like racism aside. <laughs> uh, there's a nice timer there. I like how the KO meter fills up and flashes. Um, the controls, again, are not particularly res over not particularly responsive, but they do the job. They're OK. Uh, just a shame we didn't have any like music or um, better sound effects. But uh, I guess there's only so much you can do in a boxing game. It would be nice to hear the crowd roaring as you're landing lots of punches and doing better or whatever. It builds the tension and the excitement. It's like a proper boxing match crowd. That's his tell there. 
it was dangerous trying to account to that, but we, we got through. This guy, though, is a complete nightmare. As I've already said, I'm making this look like it's easy, but trust me, guys, oh, this one caused me so much trouble. And that's the best advice I can give, guys. Just keep ducking whenever his gloves are and his guard is up. Um, as in especially his right glove, the ones that your left you're facing. And he always attacks with his left. So on your right. So And remember, guys, as soon as he lowers his gloves, attack. And then, then start dodging. And you might just squeak through. Right, penultimate fighter here. And this is probably probably one of the worst of the racial stereotypes. And uh, this is Antipodian Andy, fed on a diet of empty lager cans. This man feels no pain. Pure, uninterrupted punch power. This guy is from Australia. And just look at his picture. Oh, dear. Right. And basically, he's covered in bo uh, excessive body hair as well. Right, okay. So that's his special move there. It's the double punch. And before he does it, which, and he does it a lot, he raises both his gloves in the air. So get ducking quickly. Because, like I said, he uses it a lot. Um, I think I got through this one with with good luck spamming high punches. Um, ducking his special move and the odd dodge to the left or right. Um, seems is right. Seems right punches to the head often connect more. Body punches though rarely get through to him. Uh, only only ones to the right it seems. If so, I wouldn't bother with the body blows. Just go for the head. And always duck your special move. You've got to make sure you get that right. Do the odd dodge to the left or right and just keep spamming the head punches to the right. Vary it with the odd one to the left. So he just sits there blocking for a lot of the time and body blows don't do anything at all. So this guy's a real tough fighter. Mostly you're fighting against the clock here. So you're just trying to wear him down bit by bit. And um, that, that, that three minute time limit really comes up quick. There we go. Right, Amstrad Action Review. I always, I always look for this. Um, amazingly, um, Amstrad Action never review, reviewed the full price game from Elite. Uh, well, it looks like it came out before the first issue of Amstrad Action Magazine in October of 1985. I think this was released in some around the summer or early summer of 85. However, they did review a whopping 130 games that issue, but poor old Frank wasn't one of them. It's possible that it was reviewed on one of the compilations that he appeared on. Potentially even the Encore budget re-release got a review. But, however, that's a lot of issues of Amsterdam action uh, to trawl through. And I'm not going to. Especially because I have no idea the year or month the compilations or the budget release came out. Although I'm pretty sure the budget Encore release was 1988. But at that point, Amsterdam Action were rarely reviewing budget games. So I, uh, I did still have a quick uh, browse through the 1988 issues of AA. And found I did find a box out mention of it in a review of By Fair Means or Foul, another boxing game. Talking about and they were talking about previous boxing games in the box out. Um, they said it wasn't the best, but it's but it is still fun to play. But were exasperated about the stupid racial stereotypes. Um, but they didn't give it a score there. Mm, there we go. Anyway, we're moving on to the final fighter at last, and then I'll give my my own review score and summary. This guy, right, this guy is Peter Perfect from the United States of America. And um, surprisingly, this guy is quite easy, um, especially after the last two. Um, let's just read his bio out. World famous, world champ, the most ac accurate boxer is set to drive his engine of glory or over you. Are you a match for him? There we go. Well, okay. He's actually a fairly defensive character, but you can go in with lots of right hands to the head and the odd left. I tend to wear him down with this, and if I can manage to feel the KO meter, then after the first knockout punch you land, um, he will block all of them until you surprise him with a left body blow to weaken him and lower his guard, and then go for the knockout. But I literally beat this guy on my first go here, and I'm just kind of working out 
what he's going to do, what he's weak to. Um, and as you can see, yeah, he just sits there blocking most of the time. So spam those head punches, but just vary them. You don't really need to dodge too much on this guy either. I'm not even sure what the hell that is meant to be. I wonder if that was a tell before a special move, but he doesn't seem to have any special moves. Um, and maybe he just decided to block because I was spamming the punches there. I don't know. What I should be doing here is perhaps trying the left body blow and then move into the head. But um, I, I figure that out later <laughs> in, in the in the bout here. But again, the clock is your biggest enemy here, guys, because he's just defending. And we're now already into one minute, like 17 seconds or whatever. And we're almost halfway through and we haven't had a knockdown yet. So we've got to make our move soon. Otherwise, time is going to run out on us. But yeah, guys, as for my review score, I'm going to give this a... I very nearly give, I want to give it a 7 out of 10, but this would have been a nightmare load on cassette. And it is frustrating on boxes 6 and 7. But it's quite beloved. I think I'm going to give this maybe a... I think I'm going to give this a 6.5 out of 10. Maybe a 7. Oh, so we knocked him down there. And... Can we feel the KO meter? Right, we can use the knockout punch here. It will take the first one, but it will block all subsequent knockout punch attempts. So as you can see, I'll keep spamming it there. It just, just misses every time. So what you need to do is do like a left body blow to him. And if it connects, then quickly hit that space bar to do, try that knockout punch. I'm still experimenting here. <laughs> we will get him at the end. I think I'm gonna revise my score, guys. Seven. I think I'm going to give this a 7 out of 10. I, I actually enjoy it. Thinking about it, I did actually really enjoy playing this and making my long play video. It looks pretty naff today, but probably so does Punch Out in the arcades, but that's still great fun to play. Um, obviously, boxing games are not going to be everyone's cup of tea, but this one involves a lot of brain power and thinking, and each fighter is unique of their own personalities. And it's a joy to kind of work out what those weaknesses and attack patterns are. And they are very, quite different between all the fighters. And there we go, guys. We have defeated um, all the opponents now. And that is basically Frank Bruno's boxing complete. Hurrah! So I'll just show you what happens when you get put this new code in. Because we do get a little ending screen. Not much of one, but better to have that than nothing at all. And... And there you go. I'm the, the elite video boxing champ. <laughs> and that's it. That's the end. That's the only ending screen you get there. And then you basically repeat playing against uh, Peter Perfect over and over if you want to. And that's your lot. So, yeah, that's a cool game. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm going to give that a 7 out of 10. And then we, as you can see there, guys, my initials are in the uh, KO times there. The only one I didn't get there is the first one, the easiest one. But um, I bet if I did it again, I'd do that. I'd be, I'd fill all the times there. So thank you for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed and see you again soon. Goodbye. So thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please click a like below, leave a comment, and also subscribe if you haven't already. And over that way, there's another video for you to check out. Zypho, out.